Bruckner was a loner, a seeker, who rewrote most of his symphonies out of self-doubt. Mocked as an eccentric, he suffered from not being taken seriously. The late triumphs were balm to his soul, and the God-fearing Upper Austrian was allowed to meet his creator as a great of music history. Who was Anton Bruckner, and what places and people shaped his life? A biographical approach to the century artist from Austria. Anton Bruckner was born on September 4th, 1824 in Ansfelden, Upper Austria, and was the first of 11 children born into humble circumstances. His father was a village school teacher with additional musical duties in the church. He was very musical and supplemented his wages as a village musician. This humble background left its mark on Bruckner. He remained a simple, modest and shy person throughout his life. Early on, he was prepared for the profession as a teacher. And already at the age of 11, he carried out his first school supervisions as a substitute for his father, who recognized Anton's musical talent and taught him to play the organ. The Bruckners lived in the old schoolhouse. Here Bruckner spent his childhood until the age of 11. Today the house is a memorial place in honor of the famous inhabitant of this village. In this small museum, the visitor can see different rooms such as a living room or a classroom. Together with a model of the village, it gives a nice insight into the life of the 20s of the 19th century. In order to develop his son's talent, his father sent the 11-year-old Anton to his cousin in Hershing, who taught him to play the organ. When Anton was 13 years old, his father died suddenly. The many nights he had spent playing music for a dance in inns to support his large family had worn the man out. He left behind a penniless family. The desperate widow managed to place her eldest son Anton in the nearby monastery St. Florian, near Linz. She herself left Ansfelden a little later with the younger children. When Anton entered the monastery, he was 14 years old and became a member of the boys' choir because of his beautiful soprano voice. While there, he also received instrumental lessons, including being taught to improvise on the organ. Bruckner also spent the next period of his life in Linz. First, he attended teacher training for one year as a seminarist. He became acquainted with secular music in his studies and at the theatre, among other things, and learned harmony with Dürrenberger. Bruckner then spent two agonizing years as an assistant teacher in the countryside, where the shy outsider failed to find contact with the rural population, until he was called back to St. Florian as an assistant teacher. He had passed the teacher's examination at the age of 20 and was employed as an assistant teacher in St. Florian and remained there until the age of 31. Now he began to compose his first serious works. In 1855 he moved to Linz where he could devote himself as cathedral organist fully to music. There this position had become vacant that year. Friends urged Bruckner to participate in the competition to apply. Bruckner won it easily and at the age of 31 changed from being a full-time teacher in St. Florian to a full-time musician. He lived on Farplatz, the great square in front of the cathedral in the so-called Messnerstöckel, which has been since demolished. His main field of activity as an organist was the old cathedral and it was here that the first performance of his Mass in D minor took place. More and more he moved his musical activity to the Ignatius Church. The organ was adapted in 1867 according to his wishes. Bruckner also liked to return to the Ignatius Church during his time in Vienna to play on his beloved Chrisman organ. 
Even after 150 years, this organ has only been slightly modified, so that it can still be rightly called a Bruckner organ. In addition to his organist duties, he continued his education with two important teachers and gained confidence in composition, so that the incipient 40-something achieved his first masterpiece with the masses in D minor and E minor as well as the first symphony, all of which were premiered in Linz. In 1860, he took over responsibility for Amaze Choir, the leader Tafel Frosin. Bruckner subsequently acquired an excellent reputation as a conductor of male choirs and composed various works for choir. However, the triple burden of being the organist of two churches, the conductor of a male choir and a composer took his toll on him and in 1868 he had to take a cure of several months because of a nervous condition. Two years later, the 44-year-old experienced in Linz an important milestone in his musical career. In the Redoutensaal, the court's theatre, the first performance of his first symphony took place, which was well received. The later famous critic Hans Lick attended the premiere and reviewed it favorably. A great day occurred for Bruckner in Munich in 1865, when he met his idol Richard Wagner for the first time at the premiere of Tristan in Isolde. Wagner did not return the esteem of his Austrian colleague. Although he later spoke of the great symphonist Bruckner, he maintained a condescending attitude toward the somewhat doltish Bruckner. Bruckner was 44 years old when he came to Vienna to take over the poorly paid or not at all paid positions at the university and the conservatory. In these years, he confirmed his reputation as a leading church musician and virtuoso organ player. He moved to Weringer Straße with his sister Anna. The latter died in 1870 and Katharina Kachelmeier became his housekeeper for the next nearly 20 years until the end of his life. France was one of the few countries Bruckner visited outside the German-speaking world. In 1869, Bruckner made a sensational visit, first to Nancy, then to Paris. The reason for the visit was the inauguration of the newly rebuilt church of saint evre in Nancy. The jewel of the church was a magnificent Merklin-Schütze organ, which had previously won the gold medal at the Paris World's Fair. Because the Austrian emperor had donated for family reasons, he sent the organ virtuoso and professor of the Vienna Conservatory to Nancy for the inauguration of the organ. When Bruckner stepped off the train in Nancy, the gentlemen from the reception committee were somewhat surprised at the strangely dressed man in his mid-forties. However, when Bruckner grabbed the keys in the church of Nancy, those in charge revised their opinion and recognized Bruckner's genius. They hastily organized a visit to the French capital. Pleasantly surprised, the Austrian embarked on a three-day visit to Paris, where he played at various venues. The highlight was the concert in the church of Notre Dame, where the whole musical world of Paris sat in the pews. The great organ specialists Camille Saint-Saëns and César Franck were overwhelmed by Bruckner's playing. Daniel Aubert and Charles Gounod, who were present, also praised the arts of the virtuoso genius. Bruckner enjoyed the recognition and stated with a wink, and the ladies who listened to me always said, très très, man, they were clean. But in Vienna, people never really warmed up to the music and the strange person of Bruckner. His friends, like the conductors Hans Richter and Johann von Herberg, always remained in the minority. Bruckner suffered greatly from the many slights, when he was even unjustly publicly suspected of an indecent approach to a female student in the St. Anna affair, it almost broke his heart, he who never came close to a woman. This experience, however, did not prevent him from writing nine proposals by letter in his lifetime. The recipients 
were all young ladies who, in his opinion, were still chaste, which he called sauber or clean in his language. His last proposal, when he was 70 years old, even became famous. He fell in love with Ida Booth, a parlourmaid at his hotel during a stay in Berlin. An engagement had already been arranged, but at the last moment devout Catholic learned that the bride-to-be was a Protestant. When Ida refused to convert to Catholicism, Bruckner backed out. At the beginning of his Viennese period, Bruckner was considered a respected church musician and organist, but the storm hit him in Vienna when he dedicated his third symphony to his music god, Richard Wagner. Henceforth, castigated as a Wagnerian, he drew the scathing criticism of the influential critic Eduard Hanslick and found himself in the middle of the greatest cultural historical conflict of the 19th century, the bitter dispute between the traditionalists around Brahms and Hanslick and the new Germans around Liszt and Wagner. In line with Hanslick, Brahms often made negative comments about Bruckner's music, but the latter always remained polite. One day Bruckner and Brahms even sat together in their favorite pub, the Hedgehog, but no rapprochement took place. Only when ordering their meal did they notice that they had the same favorite dish, smoked ham with knudel. Bruckner often returned to St. Florian for visits, even after he had left the monastery, and he always stayed overnight in room number four, which is still called the Bruckner Room, and is available as a guest room. The large organ of the collegiate church was extended and overhauled for the first time in 1874. Naturally, Bruckner played on the inauguration occasion of this organ. The console can still be seen today in the Bruckner Museum in Ansfelden. Further adjustments and overhauls have been made to the organ since then, but a part of the organ is still faithful to the original and bears the name Bruckner Organ. Bruckner visited Bayreuth about a dozen times. The first time was in 1876 for the opening of the Festspielhaus, the Festival Theater. For the last time Bruckner saw the revered master in the Villa Wanfried after the first performance of Parsifal. And the latter asked him, Well, Bruckner, what do you say to Parsifal? Bruckner knelt down before him and stammered, Master, I adore you. Anton Bruckner visited Munich eight times. It was in this city that the 64-year-old experienced one of the great moments of his life, when Munich became the second city to perform his seventh, after its lukewarm reception in Leipzig, and it was received triumphantly by the audience. At the celebration the following day, the conductor Hermann Levy called it the most important symphony after Beethoven which, for Bruckner, who had often been offended and passed over, said that this was one of the greatest satisfaction of his life. During this stay in Munich, Bruckner sat with the painter von Kaulbach for the portrait, which Bruckner considered not very successful. The Musikverein Hall in Vienna was the venue for the world premieres of five of his symphonies, and also his Te Deum. The series of premieres began very badly with the Third Symphony in 1873. The Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra refused to premiere the piece. Bruckner was shocked and rewrote the work. At the premiere with the second version four years later, the audience left the hall in droves during the performance. Only 12 listeners stayed to the end. He was able to put this bitter experience behind him only 15 years later. After the triumph of the seventh in a foreign country, the premiere of his eighth in the Musikverein Hall in 1892 became Bruckner's greatest moment in Vienna. In the presence of Hans Lick and Brahms, who were sitting with a straight face in the hall, Bruckner received the ovation of the audience. But before that, he had to go through hell when the conductor Hermann Levy rejected the first version. Again, Bruckner wrote another version, as he did with many of his symphonies. Hans Richter finally performed the work. 
In the last decade of his life, the honors began to pour down on Bruckner. Especially Emperor Franz Josef honored him first with audiences and medals, then also with a life pension. And finally, Franz Josef provided the composer with a free retirement apartment in the Upper Belvedere for the rest of his life. The university also fulfilled one of Bruckner's fervent wishes by awarding him a honorary doctorate. For Bruckner this was ultimately only little consolation for the many slights he had suffered, especially in his Viennese years. Moreover, he had severe health problems in his last 10 years, which prevented him from savoring his late successes. He wanted to dedicate his last work to the dear God, but he was no longer able to finish the Ninth Symphony. Bruckner died of heart problems in 1896 at the age of 72 in his Kustodenstöckel. Previously, he had repeatedly spoken out against being buried in Vienna. He chose St. Florian. At his own request, Bruckner was buried on October 11, 1896 in the crypt of the Collegiate Basilica directly under the great organ. On the pedestal of the sarcophagus is the inscription Non confundar in eternum. In eternity I shall not be ashamed. It is the closing line of his Te Deum. According to his own statement, the Te Deum was the pride of his life. It was important to him not to waste the talent he had received from God. He hoped with the Te Deum that he would find in God a gracious judge. <laughs>